Hey guys, what's going on? Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this really cool hover animation, which I'll put up on the screen right now. Um, it's actually really simple to do and it's actually not an animation. So let's get right into it. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is open up a new document here. All right, just save this one. Um, we're gonna need a couple of things. We'll need a cube and we'll need some force fields. So let's go ahead and delete our light. I'm gonna add in a cube. Now this cube is just gonna be the object that's floating, but you guys can parent something to this, which is what I did in the last example. Very first thing I'm gonna do is add in a force field and just a regular force field is fine. And then in our force field settings over here, I'm gonna set the strength to like negative 50. Um, you can keep the shape as point. And then let's go over to our gravity settings. And I like to turn my gravity off just for starters to see how things work. I click on my cube. I go over to physics. I add a rigid body type active dynamic and we can just click on box for the shape. Now, if we press play, nothing's really gonna happen because our cube is just in the center. But if we bring our cube up a little bit here, and then we press play. Notice we have a hover already. And just like that, you have your hover. But there's a little bit more to this that I want to explain to you guys. So we have our hover because our force field is pulling down and then back up. Now, what's really cool about this is I can scale our cube down. You'll notice that it's slightly above the horizon. Whatever point it is above the horizon, the further up that it is, the further the hover will go. So if you keep it really nice and close to the horizon and then you press play, the hover will be less. Now here's where you get into the more realistic version of this. You go back to your gravity settings and you type in something like negative 0.5 or something like that. Now what now what will happen is the cube will still hover, but it'll go down further because of gravity and then it'll be pulled back up. Notice how it goes down a little bit further and then it comes back up almost as if it's in a fluid. I think this looks a lot more realistic and this is what I did with my Rubik's Cube in the previous example. Um, and I will throw that up on the screen again, but here we go. So there's one more thing. Now, obviously we have this thing interacting with the scene. It's, we have real physics, so we get a real hover. Let's go ahead and parent something to this. So I'm gonna parent the monkey. So I'll just take our monkey here, I'll bring it up. I will shift click my cube, control P, parent. And now our monkey travels with the cube. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hide the cube here. And what we want, since our monkey now has the same physics, well, it's parented to the thing that has the physics, I'm also gonna rotate this as well. So I'm gonna insert a keyframe at frame one for our, low, our uh, I'm sorry, just rotation. And then I'll go to frame 60, and let's just give it 360 degree rotation, insert one more keyframe. And now if we play this back, you'll notice now we have some rotation. Now that might be a little bit too much rotation for that amount of time. So I'm gonna drag this second keyframe out I'm also going to highlight my keyframes, right click, interpolation mode, and I'm going to click on back. And what this is going to do is it's going to have a really nice swivel to it. So now take a look at how this looks now. I think that looks really awesome. And I actually think it looks pretty fluid. Now remember, you can rotate this as much as you want. You can start, you can go back to your cube here. You can even start your cube on an angle if you want to. And you'll notice you still get that same hover effect. Now, I think this is pretty much perfect. If you wanted to, you could add a little bit of turbulence to this. I think this is perfect for what we want. Um, we have our hover effect, and let me go back to my original scene so that you guys can see how that's set up. Now, for this scene, of course, we have the Rubik's Cube, so let me go back to the start. You can see our Rubik's Cube falls down, it goes back up, and it has this really nice bouncing effect. Now, you're probably wondering, did I model all this? I did not. Um, there's a few small things I did model, but most of these things I got up here from Blender Kit, and I just downloaded them for free and imported them into my scene. I used uh, a little bit of depth of field here for our scene and an HDRI to light everything up. Um, but if you guys wanna take a look at the scene, this is what we have right here. I've got a nice little bookshelf in the background. I've got, of course, the Rubik's Cube. Um, I've got some pencils, just a nice little table with a realistic texture. I think this was photo scanned um, or it's procedural. And then up here we have, uh, right here in the back, it's kind of hard to see. We actually have a light source back here. You can probably see it better here. We have a light source here. And if you guys want to take a look at my notes for that real quick, the light source is actually going to give us a lot of noise. And we actually have a noise plugged into our emission. So when you guys are actually creating this animation, you can have a really nice realistic looking shadow on the desk. You see these shadows here? That's how we achieve that with this node set up right here. So hopefully you guys can recreate this if you'd like to. You can use any object you want. Once you have your cube set up, you can basically just press play, parent whatever object you want to the cube or multiple objects, and you can have them hover. And if you want a different speed, you can adjust the speed of your world. You can also adjust the gravitational pull 
the force field strength, the size and the weight of the object. There's a lot that you can do to achieve this effect. Of course, you're gonna wanna have good modeling for this. You're gonna have good textures. I got lucky because I just grabbed this stuff for free and I just threw it in the scene just to create a little fun little scene here. But I think this turned out great. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Have a great day. Let me know if you're able to replicate this. If you're not and you have issues, let me know. Don't forget to go back to frame one before you start your animation or your physics simulation. Sometimes you need to just go back to frame one. So if it's not working, that's usually a good fix. All right, guys, have a great day. I will talk to you soon.